what are some of the secrets to mastering divisional charts recently i made a video on venus in the navamsha and in that video i said what is navamsha chart how many of you have watched that video and also the same concept can be applied for every other divisional chart now what was the concept in that this is a very big secret See, every divisional chart is like a magnification of a particular house. Now, of course, you can go on debating if technically that is true or it is not true. But conceptually, it is true. Which means if you talk of Navamsha, as I said in that video, imagine every planet in your chart is sitting in the ninth house. <laughs> or rather, imagine there's only one house in your chart. There's only one house and the ninth house and all your planets are there, including Rahu and Ketu, all the nine planets, okay? <laughs> so how will they behave? Now, I'm not talking of if they are debilitated, it will be good or bad. If they are exalted, it will be good or bad. I'm not talking in that sense. But how will they, how will they behave? If they are in the ninth house, all the planets, how will they behave? So the same concept can be applied for other planets and other divisional charts actually. So the Shamsha chart is the chart of your professional life. The D10 is the chart of inevitable circumstances in your profession. Hmm. What does this mean? It means, suppose, the D1 chart, which actually tells you about the literal area of your profession, which means the D1 will tell you if you will be into IT or medical or whatever, law, astrology, AI, whatever, thousand professions. But the D10 will tell you how will, what kind of circumstances will you have in your profession, always independent, irrespective of which profession you are in. So it is like any planet which is sitting in the 10th house. It is like every planet sitting in the 10th house. So imagine <clears throat> in your chart, if Sun, Moon and Venus were in the 10th, what would happen? Imagine Mercury was in the 10th. So, what does it mean when I say how will they behave in the 10th house? It doesn't mean how much famous they will give, make you. It means what, see, you have to understand what is the 10th house. Like the Navamsha is the 9th house. Similarly, the Dashamsha chart is the 10th house. What is the 10th house? I said 9th house. The Navamsha is the chart of your dharma. Dharma is not just religion. It is anything which helps you become your best version. It is religion and much more. An atheist can also be dharmic. That is what I said in that video. Even if you are agnost, you can still be dharmic. This is only possible in the dharmic field. It is not possible with the traditional uh, Western concept of the Abrahamic religions. Because in the Abrahamic religions, if you are an atheist, you are, that's it. That's the end of your story. <laughs> but if you see from a Vedic perspective of dharma, you can still be dharmic. If you are not harming anybody, you are doing what is meant for you, what, what, you, are, uh, the, what you are best at doing without harming society as per the scriptural norms. So then even though you are an atheist, you are an agnost, you don't believe in God, you are still following dharma and you will get good fruits of your karma ac according to that. Okay. But what is the 10th house? The 10th house is the house of your primary karma. They say 10th house is karma, but every damn house is karma. <laughs> All right, so I am interested to know, especially there are four charts which are very important. Four divisional charts. Now, how many divisional charts are there? Please write it down in the comments. Let me see who is the first one who can write the number of divisional charts and also comment which is your favorite divisional chart down in the comment section below. I would love to see that. And also please explain why in the universe is that divisional chart your most famous chart. I'm very interested to see.
<laughs> What's so special about that child which you feel, all right? So that the 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 samsa chart, the detain chart is the chart of your primary karma, not karma. Do not say detain is your karmic chart. <laughs> every divisional chart is a karmic chart because every house has some karma associated with it, right? How can karma be only a characteristic of the 10th house? Well, that is your primary karma. Now, what is primary karma? What is the meaning of this? Primary karma means that karma which puts a label on you. What is label? <laughs> Could be good or bad, both. Label means, suppose you spend eight hours doing one particular activity in life. Then what happens is, you get a label. Oh, you are into IT. You are doing IT for eight hours. That is what makes you an IT engineer or you are a doctor or a lawyer. So that is why they say it's the house of karma. But it is actually the house of primary karma because you are primarily doing something. That is why it is the chart of your profession because that kind of defines you. If you are doing every, every day, if you are doing one thing for one third of the day, it defines you as a person. So therefore, how would every planet in the chart help you in your profession? Think about it. What would every planet do for your profession? They would, would they help you? They would create confusion. They would give you name. They would give you fame. They would give you troubles. They will give you litigation. They will give you scandals, controversies. What would they give you? That is exactly what the, the, the Shamsha chart is about. So therefore, don't just think of the, the Shamsha like this. Oh yeah, how can the planets give me fame? No, 10th house is not just the house of name fame. It is the house which defines... Your skill, that is why who is the primary character for the 10th house? It is none other than Mercury. Okay. So, what kind of important skills are the planets imparting to you? That is something you have to see from the D10. And again, when I say skills, they are imparting, they are imparting primarily, which means in your profession, which you are doing 8 hours a day. Okay. Because somebody can say, oh, my Venus is in the fifth house or first house. Yeah, you know, actually I'm a good painter. But is that just your hobby or profession? Because hobby you may do for half an hour, one hour a day or two, three hours in a week. That may or may not make uh, that as a primary karma. But if you're doing something eight for eight hours every day, it is very serious karma. You are dealing with so many people in that field. <clears throat> so therefore, it it is like uh, the Dashamsha chart when you see, it is as if every planet is telling you, hey, Mr. So-and-so, <laughs> this is what I want to give you in your profession. D9, any planet in the D9, you open the D9 and every planet in the D9 is trying to tell you, how do I want you to follow dharma? Either dharma or adharma. <laughs> so therefore, then you go uh, to the D12, the Dwada Shamsha chart. Okay, D12. D12 chart is the chart of your parents, your family lineage and all this. What kind of genes are transmitting through your <laughs> what is every planet bringing imagine your grandfather great grandfather your great grandfather married somebody and she became your great grandmother <laughs> and then from their union your grandfather was born okay or your grandmother uh, whoever it was a grandfather, then he married somebody. That lady became your grandmother. Now, the grandmother and grandfather again united and then there was one son born who is now your father. So, 
what is every planet bringing in the blood, in the DNA, that is the D12. You know, for example, if in the D12, Venus is very well placed, it can mean that Venusian traits are coming in your blood. It's like your mother tongue, not just your mother tongue, maybe much more than that. So now that means if you have a very strong Venus in your D12 and you have a reasonably good Venus in your D9, what does this mean? This means you can fully experience Dharma, you can experience yourself through Venus and you can also do it in a very good way because it's coming through your blood. And that by default makes it a very strong planet also for your profession because if then in your D10, Venus is again reasonably well placed, if not very well placed, if not best, even if it is de decent placed, you can do something Venusian in your profession. Now you can be into IT, but you can go into UI, UX design. So that is how you can actually know because see, if something is not coming in the blood or not coming from your past life through the D9. So the blood is the D12, the, uh, your own past life, that is the D9. If it is not coming through one of the two means, then you have to do it all by yourself. It's like you are starting from ground zero, which is not easy. So therefore, Sometimes I see, especially with people in real estate, I always see this. I see they, around the age of 25, 30, they started uh, investing into real estate. And then by the time they are 40, they become multi-millionaires. And I'm like, how did that happen? <laughs> I mean, how can one be so expert that a person becomes a millionaire through real estate, you know, in such short time? Now, of course, it is possible in real estate, but with a lot of debt. But without debt, how is it possible? I mean, it is still. But when I see their charts, I'm astonished. I always see a very strong Saturn or Mars or fourth house or fourth lord. Not only one of these four categories, two or three of these I see. No, and I also see a great Chaturthamsha chart. Why? Because Chaturthamsha is the, it's like every planet is sitting in the fourth house. Okay. <clears throat> so therefore, you need to understand what every chart is. So whichever area of that, whichever area of life that chart represents, imagine in your natal chart, all planets are sitting in that house and they are doing something or the other. How will they help you to achieve the aim of that house? Like fourth house, for example. If somebody is into real estate big time, you open their D9 or D12, you, you will see one of the four, as I said, you know, you will see a great Saturn or a great Mars, a great fourth house or a great fourth lot. Either in the D9 or in the D12, you will see this. It cannot happen. Now, of course, I'm not talking of those people who are like in their 60s, 70s, they have two, three properties. I'm not saying because anyways, you will have it by then. But I'm speaking of people who are in their 30s or 40s who have like, you know, multi-million dollar assets, not from their father, mother, not from lottery. By their own efforts, they have it. <clears throat> Which means either they are carrying it from their previous lifetimes or they are carrying it in their blood. Even if their father, mother has not given inheritance, somehow somebody might have given that to some of their ancestors and that is coming through their blood. So it feels very familiar. So with familiarity, one thing increases which is called risk appetite. So for example, if a person has a strong indication of real estate in D9, what will happen in the D1 when a Dasha comes? Because Dashas are always from the D1. The person would love to take some risk and you know buy some real estate, do some... Like in the US, they do all this, you know, BRRRR strategy and all this. <clears throat> you know, so all, all this all these things they will do and they will they'll make tons of money 
within 10 years and by this they will be 10 to 15 years ahead of their normal peers in their school or in their college or in their universities. Now, how is that happening? How is that risk appetite coming? Because there is a, when the Navamsha indicates something, there is a very strong inherent confidence inside of you to do certain things. And that confidence gives you the capacity to take big risks because of which you become successful in that area. Okay. So that is how you analyze every divisional chart and analyze every divisional chart uniquely but also combine things so therefore the next time somebody asks you mm, which profession should i select just don't see the d10 also see the d9 and <laughs> the d12 what is there in the blood <laughs> all right and also of course the d60 the shashti amsha chart and so many Chatutamsha. So every divisional chart has to be analyzed for every single area of your life. Is that understood? <laughs> Thank you so much for your patience. And if you like this video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And if you want consultations for your horoscope, you can go to my website down right there in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and he's right there. <laughs> Thank you. Jai Shri Ram.